good morning! Welcome to Crossbridge Online. We want to wish you and your family a happy Easter. We're so glad that you're with us this morning and we're excited to celebrate this Resurrection Sunday with you. So be sure to say hi and let us know in the comments where you're watching from today. At the end of service, we'll be taking communion together. So make sure you grab some crackers, bread, grape juice, really anything that you have. Today is truly about remembering what Jesus did together. So while you get that ready, here's a few things you need to know this week. If you're looking for more connection throughout the week, join one of our virtual small groups. This is a great way to stay encouraged and connected throughout the week. To see the small groups we have available, check out crossbridgecc.org slash smallgroups. Crossbridge is committed to loving God, loving people, and serving the world. We currently have a special benevolence fund to help those directly affected in this difficult time. Crossbridge, you have helped us raise $26,000 to help aid the community. We want to thank you for your generosity. We were truly blown away. If you want to give to the mission of Crossbridge or to this special benevolence fund, you can go to crossbridgecc.org slash give. Well, service is about to begin. We pray that you're encouraged this Easter Sunday and find yourself taking one step forward in your faith.
scars, your open arms, the beauty of your face. And through tears and joy, I lift my voice in ever.
Good morning, Crossbridge family, and happy Easter. Happy Easter. It is such a pleasure to be with you this morning on an amazing day at Crossbridge Online again, but a day where we are celebrating the resurrected Lord, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I am so thankful that you are here. And if you're a guest with us today, maybe this is the first time that you've ever jumped into church online. And, and maybe for some of you as well, this is your very first Easter in pajama pants. Um, maybe some of you are all dressed up. And for those of you kids out there right now that you're thinking, I didn't have to get dressed up today. You're welcome, okay? You're welcome. No matter where you find yourself today, I just wanna tell you that I'm so excited you're with us and that we get to celebrate together. And I just, my hope for you, no matter where you are in your faith, is that you would be able to take one step towards Jesus because that's what we're all about here at Crossbridge, taking steps towards Jesus. You know, as we have kind of progressed in our church online together, we've uh, gotten used to using emojis during the message, our, our ways of kind of communicating with each other. I love seeing this uh, to know what's connecting with you. And we kind of have our, you know, hand raise, that's me. We have our amens, that's the double hand that we've got. And uh, today I kind of want to get you with one more and it's going to have to do with our shout out today. So if you got those music notes in there, um, you're going to need those in there because the two shout outs I want to give today. And make sure you throw some sweet you know, compliments and thank yous in our comments is number one to our creative team. We have such an amazing team who has really helped to uh, take Crossbridge from a place online or in person to go online and to really help us walk through this. And they have been absolutely amazing with all of the videos, all of the images, everything you see they've created. And I'm just so thankful for them. So, you know, shout out to them and the other pieces i don't know for you but for me a third song today in worship was what my heart needed i have enjoyed worshiping with my family um, and all of that watching back later and, all, and it's been great but three songs today I, I needed that so to our worship team who you continue to social distance when you're playing and all of that you, you're doing your you're doing your best to help continue to lead us to Jesus. So shout out to you. And if there's any songs that you really miss, go ahead, throw those in the comments. So we would love to see those. And I would also love to know what songs have gotten you through this season. If there's a song that you're like, oh, that's mine, throw it in there, okay? We would love to kind of build playlists about what we're all listening to. So thank you, thank you, thank you to both of those teams. I'm just excited. And today, you know, we are closing out a series that we've been going through for four weeks, and it's things Jesus never said. Things Jesus never said. A series where we've been focusing on things he didn't say so that we can really highlight what he did and his words in red that many of our Bibles have. And so we're going to continue and kind of close it out. But before we do, I want you to have someone who's up next to the computer really quick because I need you to type in an answer and I'm going to give you a phrase. And as I give you this phrase, I want you to type the answer, the response into the comments. Are you ready? Okay. I want you to finish this phrase. What goes around, it's what, what goes around, good, comes around. What goes around, comes around. Excellent. You ready? Your past will come back to. All right, it's, it's, it's haunt you or bite you. Very good, very good. You've got this. All right, this was a little tougher. You've made your bed. Now you've got to lie in it. Very good. Okay, you've made your bed. Now you've got to lie in it. Um, these phrases, I'm happy you've got them. They're all just a slightly different way of saying um, that you always get what you deserve, right? You get what you deserve. And while this is something that we like to say in our culture, you get what you deserve, this is not something Jesus ever said. Jesus never said, you get what you deserve. As a matter of fact, he, he actually said the opposite is going to be true. But we like to say, you get what you deserve. I think this all the time, back when I used to drive and get out of my house, and my favorite thing is to be on the turnpike, and you know, as I'm going north or south, I always thought this, you get what you deserve, when that person was just like right by me on the you know, turnpike, and I'm watching them do 100 miles an hour, and then woo, 
you see them get pulled over like two or three miles up and as you drive by you kind of want to do the wave for me at like 80 miles an hour and I'm like, ah, you got what you deserve. And I know it can go a little faster because the cop's now there. You know, we, we love to say that to people, but we hate when it happens to us, don't we? That you get what you deserve because usually it comes by in a negative way. And I kind of want to look at this together today and explore what does it mean to not get what you deserve. And so to do that, I'd love for you to turn in your Bibles to Luke chapter 23. And Luke is gonna be about three quarters of the way through your Bible. And as you're turning there, um, this is a biography of Jesus written by Dr. Luke. He's a physician, someone who really studied Jesus's life and puts down so many details about Jesus. And you know, as you're turning into Luke 23, this is a story that maybe you're familiar with if you went to a Good Friday service or a Ten Embrace service, depending on what they're called and where you went. Uh, the story of Good Friday really is all about the crucifixion of Jesus. And as we approach this, what you have to understand is that this Friday that we're talking about is a horrific day. It's a day filled with pain, with suffering, with betrayal. And it's one of those days where Jesus never said, did he, that you'll always have good days. No, this is a bad day. And Jesus is living out this day and he finds himself now carrying this cross, surrounded by people just throwing insults at him and just they're being horrific towards him and they're waiting for him to take this march to where he is going to finally breathe his last breath in this perfected, torturous day of death for him. This is the worst part of the whole story. You ready? Jesus has done nothing to deserve what he is going through. He's done nothing. And yet here he is. I'd love for you if you would, in Luke chapter 23, we're going to pick it up in verse 32. And it says this, Two others, both criminals, were led out to be executed with him. When they came to the place called the Skull, they nailed him to the cross, and the criminals were also crucified, one on his right, one on his left. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Notice that Jesus never said here, Father, you don't need to forgive them. He's demonstrated and clearly said the opposite. And then we continue. And the soldiers gambled for his clothes by throwing dice. The crowd watched and the leaders scoffed. He saved others, they said. Let him save himself if he's really God's Messiah, the chosen one. The soldiers mocked him too by offering him a drink of sour wine. They called out to him, if you're the king of the Jews, save yourself. A sign was fastened above him with these words. This is the king of the Jews. This is where I really want you to lean in with these two criminals that are going to be next to Jesus. This is everything for us this morning. It says this in verse 39, one of the criminals hanging beside him scoffed and he said, so you're the Messiah, are you? Prove it by saving yourself and us too while you're at it. Now stop for a second there. Think about this. This, this man, this criminal's leaning into Jesus saying, you do what makes you happy. Right? Do what makes you happy. Get off the cross if you've got all this power and do it for us too. Why not? You know that he's joining in with all the rest of the crowds. But then things shift and you begin to see the other criminal in verse 40. But the other criminal protested, don't you fear God even when you have to be sentenced to die? Now circle this word, highlight this word, underline this word. It says, we deserve to die for our crimes, but this man hasn't done anything wrong. And then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus replied, I assure you, today you will be with me in paradise. As we celebrate Easter this morning with each other, this interchange between the second criminal and Jesus should be one of the most life-giving conversations as Jesus closes out his earthly life through this death on the cross. And, and when I think about this scene, it's so wild to me because you have two criminals who are rightfully paying the penalty for the crimes that they've committed. 
Okay, they have been sentenced. They admit that they have done things wrong, right? I mean, that's clearly here. They know that that's the case. But the second one is looking at Jesus saying, man, I know that we're getting what we deserve, but you're not getting what you deserve. You are innocent. You are innocent. And then this moment happens and he says, we deserve this. Listen, we're not much different from these criminals on the cross, right? These criminals have done something wrong. And so the penalty was death for them. And we, as we read scripture, realize that we have a problem in our life and that problem is sin. Anything that we think, we say, we do that displeases God is sin and it separates us from a relationship with him. And Romans 6.23 tells us that the wages of our sin is death, that, that because we sin, the penalty is death. That is what we deserve as humanity because of sin. But God in his great love here gives us what we don't deserve. And Jesus says it to this man. This man, this second criminal says, we deserve to die. But Jesus, would you remember me? Would you think about me and what's about to happen? And Jesus says, not only will I think about it, I will give you something you don't deserve. And what does he say? He says, I assure you today, you will be with me in paradise. You'll be with me. And this is the beauty of the passage. This is the highlight of Easter for us all. It's that no one who has ever walked on this earth has gotten what they deserved. No one who has ever walked on this earth has gotten what they deserved. Jesus, the only perfect man, did not deserve death, but he got what he did not deserve. And you and I, as sinful people like criminals on a cross, we walk if we've placed our trust in Jesus in something we don't deserve. And that is eternal life. We have been invited to be with Jesus because of this moment, because of him dying on a cross. And on Sunday, today, rising from the dead to conquer death, this is mercy and grace at its best, right? I mean, mercy is the realization that we don't receive the bad that we deserve. And grace is the Jesus telling this man that, listen, you're going to receive something you don't deserve. Mercy is we don't get it. Grace is we get what we don't. It's this beautiful moment with Jesus. He says, I want what is best for you, and what's best for you is a relationship with me so that we can be with the Father again. None of us get what we deserve. That's because God's love for us is so great that he sent his only son to die for us, for the sin that we could never, ever, ever pay for. The truth is we're not good people, right? We don't come together this morning as a bunch of good people because we've, we've woken up to celebrate Easter. Maybe this is one of the two services you might go to in a year, Christmas or Easter, and you're thinking, well, I've showed up, I'm, I'm good, right? Maybe you show up 52 out of 52 weeks and you're thinking, I'm really good. The truth is, is we're not really good people, but we come together because of a really good God. We are sinful people saved by a great God who loves us. That's what Easter is all about, is embracing the beauty that God loves us and that Jesus has paid the penalty for our sins so that we can celebrate and be in relationship with him forever. Listen, I don't know where you find yourself today. Maybe you're in a place where you're tuning in for that first time and you're like, uh, uh, I'll give church online a shot, it's Easter, why not? The guy's got a bow tie on, that's not too bad. Worship team look real good. This is wonderful. If you don't know Jesus, there's no hope. It's always dark like Friday. 
the victory of Sunday cannot be embraced without a relationship with Jesus. And it's not that it's just for you, it's for all of us because we are all sinners in need of this relationship. And if you find yourself in that place now saying, I do want that hope, I do want that relationship, I'm not a great person. Join the rest of us in saying, yes, that's why we need Jesus. So if you're in that place right now, I simply want to invite you to pray with me. To pray with me that that Jesus would take over your life. That you would submit to what he desires for you, knowing that you, like a thief on the cross, a criminal on the cross, you on one side, me on the other, can simply say, I deserve what I've got. But would you remember me, Jesus? And he says, yes, come with me. If that's where you are right now, I just want to ask you to stop for one moment and simply just pray with me right now. Would you pray with me? Jesus, I never expected to be in this situation, watching a screen and being moved by you. So Jesus, would you change my life? I confess that I'm a sinner like that criminal on a cross, I ask that you remember me, that you come into my life and allow me to be changed, to love people like you. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. Thank you for your forgiveness. Jesus, it's in your name I pray, amen. If you prayed that prayer, welcome to the family of God. Welcome to the family of God where there are people here who want to support you, who want to walk with you, who want to tell you that you have made the most life-changing decision that you could ever dream of. If you've prayed that prayer, I would love to know that and we would love to know that and I would love if you would send us an email really quick at prayer at crossbridgecc.org so that we can help you in this process. We want to send you a Bible if you don't want to have one. We want to help you find a small group that can help love you and, and encourage you when you don't know what's going on. Join the club. We want to walk with you in that. Prayer at crossbridgecc.org. Send it to us. We want to celebrate with you. And maybe today you're a disciple of Jesus. You're a Christian who has already dedicated your life. And I want to tell you that today should be the day that we celebrate different. Today should be the day where we're looking at the words of Jesus who says, you will be with me in paradise. And while we're living in a COVID culture right now where everything says to be separate, we get to celebrate different. Not because of Cadbury eggs or a chocolate bunny or a basket that may or may not have shown up. It doesn't matter. We celebrate because Jesus Christ has conquered death and that death He says, I am victorious and because of me, you are victorious. And you and I carry a story that could change the entire world. We celebrate today that we're not good people, but we're saved by a God who loves us because he is good. You and I need to share this story like crazy. We need to do everything we can to help people understand that there's a God who loves them and wants to be in a relationship with them because someone shared that with us. And so I don't know what you need to do today to share that story. I don't know if it's a simple, you know, message right after this message and after this service that you need to send someone on Facebook saying, I just want you to know that I love you and I want to remind you that God loves you. I don't know if it's a text that you send to somebody. I don't know if it's simply taking this service right now and saying, just listen, share it out or start a watch party later tonight because you know that people might watch with you and you could say hey if you have questions ask me i don't know what it means but i know that you and i are called to share the story that changed this criminal's life it's changed your life and mine let's share that story because it's changed us and it could change the world this is what crossbridge is all about this is what easter is all about it's jesus christ his death his resurrection, and his ascension into heaven for you and for I. How will you share the story that's changed your life? That's what excites me the most. And you know, today what I'm really excited about is we get to celebrate communion together. I know this may be weird for many of you, um, but we're gonna try something we've never done, and that is celebrating together. And I'll be confessing to you right now that I have so missed 
being with you together to do this, and I had no idea I'd miss it as much as I do. At Crossbridge, we moved to doing communion every week when, in uh, January, and it's been amazing, and then it got taken away, and I was like, oh, it is what it is. It's not. This is what we're called to do. And so you probably have already seen the video where we've asked you to have everything ready. Um, what we're gonna do is give you about 30 seconds right now to kind of get your table into the center of your room, if you would, and to have your family or the people who are around you um, there. And we're gonna walk you through communion together. And I would love for you to do me one favor in the next 30 seconds as you get ready. Take a picture of your setup. I wanna see what your setup looks like. This is our setup. I wanna see what yours looks like and feel free to post it later, tag Crossbridge in it. I wanna see your communion setup. So go ahead and just take 30 seconds and get yourself ready. And on the day you call me in to heaven's sweet embrace, I'll see scars, your open arms, the beauty of your face. Through tears of joy, I lift my voice in heaven. Welcome back everybody. I hope that your tables are set up. You got a good picture for us that we could kind of all share together because that's what this is. We are sharing communion together and it is the first time we're doing it this way. So uh, just a little grace for you, for me, this is gonna be awesome. And what I love most about communion is that it is centered around Jesus Christ. And as it's centered around Christ, we as his family partake together. So no matter where you are today, we do this together as a family. So even if you're home by yourself or you're home with a family, we are together a family celebrating. And when Jesus was at the Last Supper with his disciples, this Passover Seder, just like we celebrated this week, you know, the beauty is, is he took the bread that was there and he held it up and he blessed it. And he said to everyone at the table, his disciples, he says, this is my body that's been broken for you. And so what I'd love for you to do is if you have that bread, um, if you could take it and you could just break that. And to remember that this is Christ's body that's broken for you. And, and if you're uncomfortable with that, feel free to just rip off a piece and you know, you hang on to that. And he said, this is my body that's been broken for you. Eat this in remembrance of me. And just hang on a second because we're going to go through this and then we'll all eat together. And after he took the bread and he broke it, he took the cup. And this was a cup of redemption at the end of the Seder. And he held it up to his disciples and he said, This cup represents my blood, which has been poured out for all people for the forgiveness of sins. And so if you have placed your trust in Jesus Christ, the beauty is we celebrate together as a family because that blood has covered you and covered me. And he blessed this. And so what we're gonna do together as a family is to break the bread, drink the cup. And so I wanna encourage you one at a time to take your bread and to just slowly dip it in your cup and hold it over your hand for a second until everyone has been served. And then we will eat together and I want to pray over you and leave you with a blessing from Psalms this morning. So would you just take a moment, dip and just hang on until everyone's been served. Today we celebrate a risen Lord, a Lord who got what he didn't deserve so that we could get what we didn't deserve, eternal life with him. And so like the disciples who went before us and all of those throughout history who have placed their trust in Jesus, we join them as a family together. This is the body of Christ, broken for you, and his blood poured out for your sins and mine. We eat and we remember. morning I want to leave you 
with an amazing blessing. From Psalm 103, where King David writes this thousands of years ago. He says, the Lord is compassionate and merciful, slow to angry and filled with unfailing love. He will not constantly accuse us nor remain angry forever. He does not punish us for all our sins. He does not deal harshly with us as we deserve. For his unfailing love towards those who fear him is as great as the height of the heaven above earth. He has removed our sin from us as far as the east is from the west. May God bless you this week as you remember him, as we lift his name high, as we celebrate communion together and what brings us together. Would you walk with the confidence that God is for you? Have a great week, everybody. We love you. Thanks so much for connecting with us this morning at Crestbridge Online. We love that we get to be the church even when we can't physically be together. We'll see you again next week, same time, same place. Until then, keep up to date online at crossbridgecc.org.